Welcome to this week's Decision Desk HQ 2022 election forecasting model, where we use our proprietary model to forecast the outcome this November of every single seat in the House and the Senate, and of course, which party is going to win the majority in both of them. We have a number of changes this week as the third quarter fundraising numbers have come out, the FEC reports. Um, they're reported in most of the races across the country. I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, professor of data science, so let's dive into this week's model. Last week was the first time our model predicted anything but a 50-50 Senate, but after this week's FEC fundraising reports and a number of new polls have been factored in, we're back to forecasting an evenly split chamber, and that means that Democrats would maintain control with the VP's tie-breaking vote, of course. So with three polls this week showing Republican J.D. Vance leading Democrat Tim Ryan, Ohio moves back to lean Republican, which is where that 50-50 split changed. But in a bit of a strange quirk of this race, Ryan has outraised Vance 19.4 million to 4.1 million. But as of this October 1st filing deadline, Vance has 1.9 million more cash on hand, which is interesting. Georgia moves back towards the GOP with the race now rated as leans Democrat from last week's likely Democratic rating. But I think it's important to keep an eye on this race in the coming days as polls should be coming out and reflect the impact of last week's debate between the two candidates, which was super interesting and pretty unexpected from Walker's side. Pennsylvania continues to yo-yo in and out of the toss-up range. This week, it's back in. Still no polls showing Republican candidate Mehmet Oz leading Democrat John Fetterman, but this could potentially change. The DDHQ polling average stands as Democrat plus 3.7. Both Nevada and North Carolina are the two other Senate toss-up races this week. There weren't any new polls in either of these races, so not much of a change to talk about this week. Let's move over to the House. The GOP chances of the, taking the majority remain at 77% this week. Our mean seat projection remains at 230 to 205 in favor of the GOP, and that's a one seat gain for the GOP, mainly due to fundraising reports and a fractional uptick which favored them in the generic ballot. The DDHQ generic ballot average is now Republican plus 1.3%. We have 18 seats in the toss-up pile this week. 18, that's a fair amount of numbers. Most notable among them is the Alaska at-large seat, which moves back to toss-up from Lean Democrat, which is super interesting. Beyond that, there are nine seats that lean Democrat and 11 that lean Republican nationally. You can see the full list on our website linked right below here. That's going to do it for this week on our Decision Desk HQ forecasting model. If you're enjoying these videos, please give it a like and then subscribe to our channel and make sure to sign up for notifications, the little bell, so that you get a notification when we post one of these looks at our model or a primary night preview video. If you have any questions or comments you'd like us to address in a future video about our forecast or our modeling in general, please just leave them in the comments and we will absolutely do our best to answer them. Until next week, I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, professor of data science. Thank you so much for watching.